G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a tutorial in Dynamo using Python. Um, I do get quite a lot of requests for Python, so I hope this is a useful tutorial. Um, today we're going to look at how you can get the parent view of a view in Revit using uh, Dynamo and Python. Now in this case, you can do this just using a get parameter value uh, by name, but what we're gonna be doing is expanding upon this in the next tutorial by modifying the function to get every single possible parent of all the parents of a view. So effectively what I call the views ancestry, all the parents. And this is really useful when you're trying to delete views that aren't on sheets, for example. This is actually the use case that this node came from um, to make sure that you don't just go and delete the parent of the child which deletes the child as well, um, because it's a dependent callout. So in this case, um, I'll be using Revit 2020, but you can probably use most versions of Revit that support uh, Dynamo, that support Python. Um, so in this case, feel free to use any, but um, hopefully you enjoy this, um, let's get started. So we're gonna begin just by um, adding some views to find callout parents for. So in this case, I'm gonna create a, a callout, in this case on the main floor plan in this project. And I might create a couple, I'm just gonna create two, callouts and I'll make a call out over here that has one level of parenting but then in one of these callouts I'm going to create another one so we've got a call out within a call out um, let's go into this call out and make a couple of couple of uh, call outs on top of that so we're creating quite a strong depth of um, what I call ancestry in this case <laughs> there's a lot of parents of parents of parents if that makes sense so now that I've just established a couple of these um, we're now going to begin to try and identify the parent views of these callouts or views um, and find out the views they belong to so that we don't go and say delete the parents of views which deletes the views in turn. So let's open Dynamo. Now we're going to be using a property of views in this case. So what I've already done is went to Revit API docs and I have found in this case um, this enumerable parameter, um, the parent view. So this is the property we're targeting or the parameter that we're targeting in the view. Now, the, the Revit API doesn't always make a lot of sense. I've got to say this property here, it, it's the only one I could find that related to a parent view. So I just did try it out as a parameter you can obtain. Um, and sure enough, it works on non-section views. Um, you know, it makes sense, right? But I guess the first, when they first built Revit, maybe there wasn't callouts, I'm not sure. And maybe this was the parent view of a section or an elevation, for example. So maybe that's the history of why they've stuck with this parameter name. Anyway, um, in Dynamo, I'm just going to begin by getting all views. So I currently have in Crumple just a node um, called views. And this just retrieves all the views in the model. So it excludes view templates, legends, schedule types, um, things that might appear if you search through the view class, um, or if you do a view node, um, it filters out a lot of those things we don't care about. So we just have a list of all the views in the model. And some of these are going to be callout views. So we can see all those callouts down the bottom. Um, we're going to try and find the parents of these views and we're going to use Python to do it. So I'm going to create a Python script and I'm just going to have one input, which is my views. Now my Python script is coming with a, a whole set of elements. This is my Python template, which you can find on my GitHub. Um, it contains just all the standard libraries that you need um, to build a script. Uh, and then I usually delete things when I begin this process. Now I'm just going to save the script first of all. But what I'm going to do is just keep a few things. So I'm not making any transactions. So I'm getting rid of the transaction manager. We're not doing pretty much anything with these libraries here. So we're not using any system libraries. We're not creating any uh, proto geometry or preview geometry. And we're also not really using the Revit nodes either. Um, as far as I can recall, no, we're not. So. In this case, I'm also just going to keep the Revit API, but get rid of the API, uh, or the UI from Revit API. And I'm just gonna keep the current document. I don't need to use the to list function for anything, but I am gonna keep my unwrapped list function. Um, in this case, this just takes uh, an input and assesses whether it's an object or a list. And if it's an object, it turns it into a list with one object. That's just so we can iterate over it in all cases. I use this in all my custom nodes to make sure that if someone feeds one thing into a node um, that's not in the form of a list, we can still turn it into one. Anyway, I'm also gonna keep my unwrap list node um, and I'm gonna call in this case, uh, this input view list because we're working with views. So I'm also gonna get rid of the transaction and just rename this uh, header, delete these. And for now, I'm just gonna make my output view list as well. I'm just gonna say for this, this is uh, the, the main function. So at that point, I'm going to save. And I should have at this point a function, which when run, will just return the views that I feed into the node. 
We're now gonna process their parents instead. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually establish some empty containers to fill with data when we send them out the other side of the node. We're gonna make three variables. The first one is going to be uh, the parents of the view, which will include a null output if they have no parents. So I'm gonna say parent list as my first variable. I'm gonna say comma, because we can declare more than one variable using an equal statement if we apply an equal number of inputs and things that we're setting them to, which is a really handy trick for saving space. I'm gonna make a, something called has parent. And in this case, this is gonna be a Boolean so that we can like filter the original view set if we want to. And I'm also gonna say only parents. So the third output is just gonna be the parents. It's not gonna contain anything else in the list. So there'll be an empty list if there's no parents. Um, actually, we're gonna leave out the empty lists altogether. We're just gonna take the parent views. From here, I'm gonna say equals and I'm gonna do square brackets. And we're just gonna declare three using a comma. So each of those inputs is now parallel to a empty list. Okay, so at this point we can move on to our main function. So we're gonna be iterating over every single view. So I'm gonna say for, for V in view list. So now we're declaring a loop. Um, we're gonna try to find in this case the, the property. And if we can't, then we know it has no parents. So first I'm gonna say uh, try. And this is gonna allow us to fail potentially without causing an error. So first of all, I'm gonna find out the ID of the parent of this view. So I'm gonna say equals, and I'm gonna apply a method, which is the get parameter method, where you can call on a parameter by a particular name. Now we're gonna call on that built-in parameter, the section parent view name. So I'm just gonna go over to the Revit API, copy this property, but we are gonna to need to, to, to declare that it's a built-in parameter as well. And then I'm just gonna dot and add this property. And we're gonna declare this as an element ID as well. Now I think there's some methods you can find if you look up the parameter class. You can usually find the conversion methods available. I believe they're um, methods in this case. So it should take me to the parameter class. And now if we go to methods, uh, we can see as double, as element ID, there's all sorts of conversion methods available. A really common one is as value string, um, which converts the value of a parameter to a string output. But if the value returns an element, we're gonna need to get the element ID and then call on what that element is. So in this case, we now have an element ID available for the parent if there is one. Um, I'm then gonna say the parent element is equal to uh, that document element. So I'm gonna use the document um, document get element function, which is a really useful function. And we're gonna say from the current document, which is doc or declared as document already, um, up here in my default template. And then we're gonna call on that parent ID. Now we don't necessarily have a view at this point. Some of these views won't have parents. Um, so from here, I'm gonna say parent list append, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say in this case, we wanna add that, that element. Now we're in a try except loop. So in this case, it may not necessarily, sorry, statement, but it's not necessarily going to be successful in this case. So we are gonna to have to build up a condition. Now what I found with this particular function is that it will give you a rational element up to a point. Um, at this point, you can actually end up with a null output because it will give you an element ID of negative one and return a null and the try except statement still thinks that this works. So what I'm also gonna do is say inside this loop, if the parent element is equal to none, which is essentially a null value, then I'm gonna say in this case uh, that we wanna append in this case. So if it's not equal to none, so it's successful, we're gonna append, so we're gonna add that element to the only parents list. Now I need to indent that as well. I'm also gonna say that has parent is true. So this should, in this case, um, successfully add the parent. If there was no parent available, then it's gonna return a null anyway, which is the intent. So that's what would happen up here if the parent element was equal to none, because it still passes in the eyes of the try and accept statement. It's a little bit of a weird one, that one, but it's just a behavior I sort of learned while building this function. I'm then gonna say that otherwise in this if loop, um, or this if statement, I should say. Um, we're gonna say that has parent is gonna have false appended to it. So it doesn't have a parent. 
Now we're still in a try accept statement here, so we need to go back and I'm gonna say accept. So if it just fails altogether, um, we know in this case that the parent list needs to have a null. So I'm gonna append none, which is null to the parent list. And I'm gonna say that has parent is gonna have an appended false. Now in this case, we're not appending anything to the only parents list because we only want parent views to be in that list. This list isn't gonna be parallel to the starting list. Um, it's just gonna be relative to all the parents in just a single list. And I'll show you why I'm doing that quite shortly. So finally, we need to send some things out of our node. So we're gonna send out our original variables that we've declared up here, which are now lists with objects in them. So I'm gonna make a list and close the list. So we're sending out three elements. So if I save and save, we can see that now we have three outputs. Now I might just go to a watch node so we can have a look at this more easily. Okay, so we can see that some of these don't have parents. Notice that our first list is our list of parents, but we can see some of them do. We found, um, in this case, views that have a parent. Um, now noting we've only found one parent, so we haven't went all the way to the top of the relationship. As well as this, um, we can see that sometimes we have true. So we can see which ones do have parents. And finally, we have a list of just the parent views. So what I could do is filter by Boolean mask. I can get, in this case, the index of the output at one, which in this case is the true false mask. And I can actually just, in this case, retrieve all views that have a parent. So we can see it's a really handy function. Now, the interesting thing about this is some of those parent views also have parent views. So if we wanna go all the way back and find out the ancestry of a view, it's a little bit harder. Now you could obviously um, chain these together using the second output. So what I've actually done is turned this node into one inside my own package. Um, if I look for uh, parent view, this is effectively this Python script inside a custom node. So if I edit this custom node, you'll see that we feed in views and then we're splitting out our output into parent view, has parent and only parents. But I can actually chain these together using the only parents output. This is sort of why I like to build my own custom nodes because I can really customize how they behave. So some people might not have added this only parents function. But what I can do is take my views and my third list is gonna be just the parents. And to those, I can also get their parents. And now, we find some that have parents, some that don't, and now we get our parents again. Now we can take those parents and get their parents. And we can just keep going until we get to the bottom of our parents. Now this is a highly inefficient computational method because you're gonna to need to know your deepest level of parent relationship in order to make sure you get them all. So in our next tutorial, we're gonna cover how you can use a while loop, which is quite complicated, um, in order to expand upon this function to find every single possible parent in the list. But once we've got all these anyway, what we can just do is join them together using a list join. Take all of the parents from each output. But we are gonna improve on this. And we've got a big joined list now of all the possible uh, views that have a parent-child relationship. And we can now in this case just run a unique items across this list. And now we should have all the views that effectively have a parent-child relationship in this case. And we can see that we found all of our, all our callouts and all of our callout views. Um, so that is one way you can sort of exhaust all the parent views in your, in your model. Um, really handy when you're deleting views that aren't on sheets, which is the, the use case that this actually came from. Um, but also just really handy in general when you're trying to find, find out which views belong to other views. Um, obviously you can use the element get parameter by name parent view, but we're gonna expand on this next um, to do this to an infinite depth on views. So hopefully that's a useful uh, Python tutorial um, and also just teaches you a little bit more about the Revit API um, with a really useful use case. In the next part, we'll look at something much more complex. So there we go, um, quite a useful function that turned into a custom node as well. Um, hopefully you found it useful and it teaches you more about Python. Um, just reminding you, I do have a Python series that teaches you the principles of Python from the ground up on my channel. So if you were a bit confused by anything you saw here, definitely go and check it out. Um, it's got a lot of principles behind Python in it. Anyway, um, we'll look at the next uh, part in the next tutorial, which comes out this week, um, which is gonna look at the, the ancestry method where we get all the parents in a row. So definitely make sure you tune in for that one. 
Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care, bye.